Hey everybody, Jeremy and all in here again on yet another adventure. This time we're going to Boise, Idaho, actually a little past Boise, to get two pretty unique cars. It's going to be a lot of fun, so uh, enjoy. So I just wanted to show you guys something here on this adventure. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, this is the Snake River Gorge going into Twin Falls, Idaho. And anyway, I'm gonna just kind of show you how deep it is. So as you can see, it's like flat, flat, flat land. And then all of a sudden, bam, you got this small Grand Canyon essentially. And uh, it's deep, it's pretty far down. And then it goes back to Flatland over there, that's Twin Falls. Over in the distance there, that, that is the uh, ramp that Evil Knievel tried to jump over. Um, we'll walk out on the bridge a little bit. And it's kind of funny, because every time cars drive across a bridge, especially a semi or something, you actually feel the whole thing vibrate. It kind of feels sketchy. But in order to get an appreciation of how high you really are, I'm going to go out here a little ways. I mean, you can see some kayakers down there on the river. It's really a beautiful view, especially right now because it's green. Well, hear that? That's the guardrail shaking, vibrating from the cars. Starting to get pretty sketch. Look down there. Woo. See the shadow? Sorry, it's probably pretty hard to hear me right now. It is pretty sketch, honestly, when the semis drive over. You're pretty high up here. What do you think, Colin? Is it sketchy? Massive anxiety. It's causing you massive anxiety. You're literally above the birds. Probably can't see in the video. There's a couple birds over there. But it's an awesome view. Every once in a while, you'll see people jump off and uh, do their skydiving things. So there's a golf course down there. So this is just another view. This is kind of below the bridge looking out over the river. And if you look over here, you can see the whole field. This is where the base jumpers land. You've got a sock down there, a wind sock. You've got a target, everything. And it's quite a, it's quite a fall. Uh, I've seen him do it before. It actually, it's pretty cool looking to watch. Um, you can see how beautiful it is. Uh, it's, it's a lot of, lot to take in.
Okay, everybody, here we are with the first pickup. This is a 1974 Dodge Dart Sport. And something's really cool about it, which makes it unique, is it is the Hang 10. And you can kind of see it still here on the sticker. Um, the Hang 10s were really interesting because they had this uh, interior that red shag carpet and these crazy stripes had a fold down rear seat you could open the trunk it was meant to put your surfboard in uh, this car also was optioned with the tough wheel um, and air conditioning it's a pretty cool project you can see there's not a lot of rust it's got a california blue plate this one is a 318 car it's a pretty much complete car not exactly sure what we're gonna do with this one yet but if I have my way it's gonna stay looking the same and be built into an autocross car how cool would that be anyway we'll go over more information after we get at home uh, right now I'm gonna hurry and get it loaded up Okay, so we've got the first one loaded, and now we're going to go get the second unique car, uh, which I'm pretty excited about as well. Uh, we're only a couple miles from it. Luckily, both of these cars were only 20 miles from each other, and uh, which is kind of unique. Uh, but anyway, so I'm going to get going. Look at this. Beautiful view. This is Emma, Idaho that we're pulling into. Okay, everybody. Here's car number two, and look what it is. It's a second Hang 10 Dodge Dart Sport. This one's a 75, so I've got both years. Uh, as you can see, the cool surfer uh, said Hang 10. Something really cool about this, factory sunroof. See the interior is actually more complete than the other one. Definitely dirty, but it's all there. Tough wheel in this one. And this is an AM FM stereo from the factory. Also V8, I'll open the hood when we get home. Um, anyway, how crazy is it to have two hang tens out of the approximately 100 known to exist? Actually, it's less than that, but So this is a 71 Demon. Uh, we may work to deal on this. So this may be coming home with me at another point. Has the wrong front, front clip, but looks relatively solid. Just a slant six car, but that can be changed pretty easily. Okay, so both hang tens are loaded up. Isn't that kind of a crazy sight? Two actual hang ten cars in one load. That's pretty cool if you ask me. So anyway, we are 
going to get on the road. Well, it's Friday morning and we're just leaving the hotel and heading home. Kind of anxious to get home and actually look at these cars and see what we can do with them. It's gonna be fun. Two hang tens. Boy always falls asleep. So, coming home to Utah from Idaho, uh, decided, you know, we're driving close to l, &L Classic cars, and so decided to stop in, and uh, you'll be able to see this on the next episode of Shade Tree Vintage Auto. Well, we stopped yet again for fuel. Uh, this is like the fifth time, um, but here we are. This is kind of a cool place. You've probably seen it in one of my other videos. I believe I filmed it. If not, it's a picture on my junkyard photography on Facebook or Instagram. But we're here at this cool little uh, gas station restaurant. Uh, it's just outside of Rupert, Idaho on I-84. It's just kind of a cool triangle building. But figured we'd stop here and get a shot with the cars and needed fuel anyway, since the next stop is uh, like next fuel. I think it's 64 miles, so better safe than sorry. But still really cool. Have two hang 10 darts, actual hang 10 darts. Unfortunately, it's faded, but this would have been red and white stripe. Same with this would have been, or sorry, red and blue stripe. And this would have been red and blue, but you can kind of see remnants right there how the stripe was <clears throat> so supposedly less than a hundred of these known to exist so there's two percent of the existing hang 10 darts right here uh, and I my friend has the third one that used to be mine and uh, so it's also there in Cache Valley near Logan. So there will be 3% of the existing Hang 10 Dodge Dart population within uh, miles of each other, which is pretty cool, really. So you see Allen doing his job. He's gotta, gotta pay his keep by pumping the fuel. We need so. a sticker. So the audience needs a sticker. Oh, there you go. I can I know some of you guys won't agree, but look at that. Jeez, hurts the pocketbook. People that think going and getting these cars is cheap and easy, you got another thing coming to you. So, factory sunroof. Stop when it's full.
Well, we made it back. Um, so now I'm gonna unhook the trailer and then unload this car. And that's probably about where I will end it for today. Um, but I'm gonna do some more video of these tomorrow when I come in. And uh, then I'll finish up this episode uh, after we kind of go over these cars and discuss what I want. I really, really, really want to make this into an autocross car. Leave it basically looking how it is and uh, just redo all the suspension and drivetrain and everything. So hey, if anybody wants to sponsor me, you know, uh, we got this project. Uh, anyway, we'll uh, talk again tomorrow. Saturday now and uh, we're gonna play with the two hang tens a little bit. May see if we can get them running. I've got Cameron here helping and uh, gonna see if we can get this one to start up. However, there is definitely an issue with it. There's a bunch of gasoline in the oil. So I don't know if it's a bad engine. I don't know if it's just a bad fuel pump or if somebody is just, you know, hasn't checked the carburetor and it's just dumping fuel. So we're gonna see if it will fire up at all. And then this one, we're gonna unload it and see if we can get it to fire up. This one's been sitting for a long time. It did actually come from Wildcat Mopars in Sandy, Oregon, um, like a year ago. And uh, they had it fired up just by pouring fuel down the carburetor. So we're gonna see if we can get it running. And uh, if everything goes well, it might be fun just to kind of take it for a spin around the yard, but we'll see how far we get today. Uh, either way, it's gonna be fun. It's not, a very, uh, not very often that you get to work on two hang 10 darts. So kind of exciting. Okay, so this is the 75 and this is uh, the engine that's in it, obviously. It's uh, 318 or it's supposed to be. Uh, like I said, there's a bunch of fuel in the oil. And in fact, when we loaded it onto the wrecker uh, at that angle that it was on, it just started dumping out the back of the engine. So I'm not sure if there's a bad seal or what the deal is. I just want to see if it'll fire up, see how it sounds at all. Um, if it's junk, I have another 318 that we will throw in it at another date, make this car run and drive. This car is for sure going to be sold. So if anybody's interested in it, let me know. Uh, but I want to get it running, driving, and then, uh, you know, go from there. So really quick, I'm going to go over the interior again of these Hang 10s um, a little bit more thoroughly. This one is optioned with the tough wheel, as is the other one, which is kind of cool because most of them didn't have the tough wheel. So that was a sort of expensive option. Uh, the red shag carpet, you can see is still complete in this one. And look at the cool stripes. When this interior is fresh, it looks so awesome. You wouldn't think it, but it's just neat and very, very unique. Uh, anyway, we are going to go ahead and try to get this thing to fire up now. So we'll see what it does. And just jump the solenoid, make sure it even does something. So, I don't know if you guys could hear that on video. There's definitely some noise coming from the bottom end. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that this engine is probably uh, not good. So we're going to uh, 
basically push this one out of the way and play with the other one. So this is the 74. And honestly, I personally am way more excited about this one than the 75, even though the 75 has the factory sunroof, AM FM stereo. Uh, it's got the larger rear end, which is an eight and a quarter. This one has a seven and a quarter. Um, I don't know why I like the 74 more other than my red Dodge truck, red that you guys have seen. And it's over there in the background. You can sort of see it. It's also a 74 and be kind of cool to have them both as autocross vehicles or something. Uh, but this one, the interior is not near as nice as the 75. Uh, you know, it's missing the carpet. Seats are pretty baked. I mean, it's pretty rough. But I think that's one reason I think it'll be fun to do as autocross cars because it's kind of ugly. Uh, the other problem with this car is it stinks inside. I mean, it's bad. Uh, but that all will change in time. Uh, this one has the 318. It is a factory AC vehicle or car. I will probably, if I keep it and we do what I would like to do, the AC will be removed and we'll get a 360 Magnum and some other stuff. But just not sure if we're going to go that route yet or not. Uh, we're going to see if we can get it started. Maybe, maybe do a really sketchy drive around the yard. There are absolutely no brakes, as I found out as we rolled it off the trailer. Uh, luckily, the handbrake sort of worked. It was kind of deja vu of the uh, 69 340 Swinger the other day. Um, but anyway, so we're going to just try to get it fired up, get it running, see how it sounds. But like I said, this car, I'm way more excited personally about this car. It's ugly but cool. And then something kind of awesome is there's there is some rust in it, but look at this trunk floor. That thing is so clean and nice. And then uh let's see if I can do this one-handed. One of the cool things about the hang tens and a lot of other darts and dusters. So this would fold down. like that and then the seat folded down and you could put your surfboard or two by fours or whatever you wanted in here uh, i actually i had one of these once and slept in the back and i'll tell you it worked definitely not comfortable uh it's not really flat but in a bind you know it worked so anyway camera and i are gonna uh see if we can get this thing to fire up so we are working on getting this running and like i've mentioned before 90 percent of the time you're going to lose the fuel pump so we're going to go ahead and just replace that right off before we even start that way i can flush out the actual fuel line this piece right here and then we're going to run an auxiliary tank for now the fuel tank on this is junk it's had obviously been picked up by a forklift back there and they crushed the tank so it's going to be no good anyway uh and you know, it's always good just to have fresh fuel going right to the carburetor. So we're going to do that and uh, see how it fires up or if it will fire up. And then maybe try to put some brake fluid in it and see if we can get anything. If not, we'll just go for a fun, enjoyable and scary ride. Um, but really, as crusty as this car looks, A bodies are famous for rotting back right here. And this one's really solid on both sides. Honestly, very solid car, even though it looks pretty sketchy in a lot of places. So we're going to go ahead and get to work. Um, enjoy.
One thing I always do is uh, when I have the fuel line off like this, especially on something that's been sitting for a really long time, is I'm going to just spray carb cleaner through the line and uh, try to blow out all of the old fuel and other crap that's in there. So really simple. Just be sure to aim it away from you so you don't get yourself in the face. And that part's probably good enough. And we're going to pull this filter off on this one. And I always use brand new hose clamps as well. Um, these old ones, sometimes they'll work just fine, but I find that they kind of strip a lot easier than just getting new ones. And I messed. Cataloged. And same thing, just make sure that it's aimed away from you or anything you care about. And it's nice and clear, so we're going to put new sections of hose and new filter. And then uh, once we put the new fuel pump on, we can hook this all up and uh, looks pretty good. We're getting closer to firing it up. Got the fuel pump on, the lines cleaned out and reinstalled. Now we're just putting the alternator bracket back together. I'm gonna go see if I can find a clip for the uh, throttle cable and a couple other things. And I mean, it's not like I have a shortage of parts. I just have to find it, uh, which that's one of the cool things about having my own salvage yard. So I can do that uh, anyway. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get to, uh, get to work. So we have the fuel pump in, the alternators back in, belts are really loose, but hey, we're uh, not gonna go very far with this if at all. Um, anyway, we have not even tried to crank it over to even see if it cranks yet. Uh, I had comments on my 340 car that you guys wanted to see initial startup and everything. So we literally have not done anything yet. Uh, if it fires up, awesome. If not, that's just part of it. But you guys get to be here to watch us uh, either succeed or fail. I'm kind of leaning towards we'll probably fail, but you never know. Uh, we may be pleasantly surprised. If it fires up with carb cleaner, we will go get some fuel and uh, run an auxiliary tank and hopefully take it for just a little spin around the yard, maybe try to do a donut because uh, we have a lot of gravel around here, so that'd be fun. Uh, anyway, so here we go. Let's hook this up. Okay, let me see if it even cranks. I guess I should stand in front of it. Okay, nothing. Right. See if you can jump it. The alternator gauge is working, so, or it's moving, so there's juice. Yep, sounds like a dying dolphin. Okay, well, since the ignition switch doesn't work anyway, I will come out here. You wanna do the honors of that, and I'm gonna stand in front of it so when it takes off in reverse, I fall on my face. Let's see if we're even getting a spark, but I agree it's not spinning very fast. <clears throat> Since there's this handy spark plug already right here. I have a feeling for a reason. Probably. Uh, right at the end there was a faint <laughs> Oh, it's trying though. It's trying to kick over. 
Well, let's, it's kind of faint, but it's there ish. Now, if I can get that back on. Good enough. Those eight mil? Sure look like it. Look like Excel eight millimeter. Yeah. So I think part of the problem is this battery is about dead. So I'm gonna have to see if I have another one uh, that's worth a dang. Might have to put that on the charger truck. Charger truck's about out of gas, but that's we could. Right. Um, here at the scrap yard, we have what we call charger trucks um, or yard trucks. And when they run out of gas, they get crushed because we get so many. And uh, I actually put gas in this one before. So maybe we'll hurry and try to put it on the uh, battery charger and see what happens. So give us a minute. Okay, take two, we've got the battery in, uh, another battery. So let's go ahead and see what it does now. Mm, nothing. We broke it. Broke something. Done goofed up. Uh, I don't know what we could have goofed up. We didn't. Uh, did you? Uh, I don't know. Nothing broke from anything. Uh, it's breaking. What the? For crying out loud. That's why the camera nice seats. Working on old cars is so much fun. Stress relief. I'm gonna try that. I mean, I don't know how we would run that battery dead. We just barely started the truck up. take two was a fail okay take three now let's see what we'll do we've got jump cables hooked up to it Kind of trying to gallop. So, not run better on gas than we on cheap carbon choke cleaner. Um, I think that's what we're gonna do. We'll get some gasoline and try to fire it that way. And cut. Okay, so we are back for another attempt. We have jump cables, everything. We have the auxiliary tank. Now one thing, always be aware when you run the auxiliary tank, I would recommend leaving it out of the car. That way if there's a fire or something here, you don't have the gas tank right here. You can really just pull the hose out and chuck the tank over there or whatever. Um, and then have like a little container here. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So I do see one problem where we're not going to drive the car, but we'll go ahead and fire it up. 
this carburetor's junk. It is actually leaking fuel right outside of the carburetor. So we'll just fire it up for a second, but we're not gonna drive it today. I'm gonna have to find a different carburetor. Shows we're getting fuel in the fuel filter now, so that part's working. I think this carburetor is just pure junk. It's not getting fuel up in it yet. Yeah, I think this carb's just pure junk. I do have another one at home. Um, so another day, I think we will uh, we'll get it fired up and maybe I'll grab a master cylinder so we can make the brakes work and whatnot. And then we can go for a proper drive. So with that being said, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just end this episode and uh, get some other stuff done on the car and we'll go from there. Uh, so thanks for watching. As always, if you haven't liked and subscribed, please do so. And uh, be sure to just keep following and watching. We've got a lot more adventures planned, and uh, we're gonna start having a lot more fun uh, with the videos, not just technical stuff. Uh, I want, soon we're gonna be driving stuff, and it's gonna be great. So thanks again, have a great day.